Make no mistake, of all leading cigarettes, one and only one is recognized by eminent nose and throat specialists as definitely less irritating. That one cigarette is Philip Morris. Johnny presents the Milton Berle Show. <laughs> Here comes Johnny, ladies and gentlemen, to remind you. If every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris. Yes, they'd all. From Radio City in New York, here is the Milton Berle Show with Kirk Kelton, Jack Albertson, Johnny Gibson, Mary Ship, Billy Sands, Charlie Irving, our singing star Dick Farney, the music of Ray Block and his orchestra, and yours truly, Frank Gallup. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, great material. <laughs> Tonight we salute the new year. In just 24 hours, we'll all start the new year with a big bang. That's right. We now bring you a comedian who starts every Tuesday night with a dull thud. And here he is, Milton Berle. Thank you and good evening. Gosh, we have an audience. How'd you get here, dog sled? <laughs> Much obliged. <laughs> Boy, Mr. Gallup, how about that blizzard, huh? How about the blizzard? It's going to cost New York $7 million to remove the snow. Well, that's ridiculous. Just bring the bookies back and they'll clean out the city in 20 minutes. You know, Mr. Gallup... Oh, you do. You're yeah. Mr. Gallup. No, I'm going to be an ad-libbing fool tonight. You know, Mr. Gallup, at the height of that record snowstorm, in the midst of that terrible blizzard, I only thought of one thing. One thing. In a crisis like this, I, I wanted to be near my mother. Your mother? Yeah, she's in Florida. <laughs> She got her old job back as lifeguard. <laughs> but then, uh, for Mr. Gallup, there's also the bright side to this record snowstorm. My brother Frank is working again. Really? Yeah. What does he do? Oh, he's got a big job. He feels the lumps in the snow and tells you which car is yours. <laughs> well, Mr. Gallup, that blizzard was brutal. Only the subways were running. In New York, I had two choices of dying. Freezing or squeezing? <laughs> freezing or squeezing? <laughs> Everything else is still buried in the snow. That joke they had to dig up. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it. You don't. Uh, but now, come on, Bert. <laughs> You can easily be replaced, you know. He has I... a conflict. For the listeners that are listening in, may I explain what the conflict is? That means when a radio performer has another position and cannot make the one that we want him for. <laughs> You're through. Next act. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, now please. All right, sir. The, the blizzard is over, you yes, know. Yes, it's all over, and tonight we're discussing the new year. That's right. Yes. That's right. How true, Mr. Gallup? I led you into that pretty good, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, I still haven't made any plans for the New Year's Eve. Do you know anyone who's getting together a party? Yes, Henry Wallace. <laughs> Mr. Gallup. Mr. Gallup. See, you're getting to be a regular park your carcass. That, um, that was pretty good. For this program, yes. Now watch that, Mr. Gallup. After all, this program is your bread and butter. <laughs> Excuse me, for you it's your rye crisp and anchovy paste. <laughs> What are you doing New Year's Eve? So, we're having our traditional festival at my club, mm -hmm. the Pelham Bay Friends of Yellow Pestle. <laughs> Yellow Pestle? Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, festival? Yes, oh, it's a beautiful gesture. Nice gesture. Mm, lovely. Led by Asha Heifetz, Jose Turbi, and Arturo Toscanini, they all gather on the poop deck of the Staten Island Ferry. <laughs> The Staten Island Ferry. Yes, and just at the stroke of midnight, they welcome the new year with the world's greatest music. Gee, Heifetz, the Turby, Tuscany, they must be good. Good? Mm -hmm. Why, last year they made $8 in tips alone. <laughs> All 
all those big musicians playing on a ferry boat? Wait until Petrillo hears about it. Petrillo? Yeah. Who do you think passed around the hat? Oh, oh. <laughs> Mr. Gallup, that story was positively bewitching. And in a minute, our listeners will be wishing they were listening to a different program. So on... <laughs> So on with our salute to the new year. But first, let us review the old year as we present the highlights of 1947. Music. 1947's award to the outstanding figure in the world of music went to a courageous, patient woman who had nothing to do with music. She had to listen to it. Hats off to Mrs. Harry Truman. <laughs> Sports highlights. No, no. I'll tell you when. Sports, uh, Sports highlights of 1947. Baseball. New York Yankees defeat Brooklyn for the World Series. Football. Notre Dame and Michigan voted nation's top teams. Boxing. The Lewis Walcott heavyweight championship fight. It was in the field of radio that the most startling event of 1947 took place. In March 1947, as it must to all comedians who test a response long enough, a radio program was given to Milton Berle. Two versions of how this unbelievable event took place have been circulated. Here is Milton Berle's version of how he came to have this program. Our scene opens as Burl enters the office of the Philip Morris Company. Well, uh, gentlemen, here I am. Oh, Mr. Burl. I can't believe it. It's Mr. Burl in person. Good evening, Mr. Phillips. Good evening, Mr. Morris. <laughs> your coat. Oh, gosh, look at that coat. It's mink. Yeah, it's mink. Well, it was raining today, you see. <laughs> I can't get over it. The great Milton Burl coming to see little old us. <laughs> I just happened to be in the building. I'm being fitted for a new money belt. <laughs> received your frantic wires. Tell me, what is it? Mr. Burl, sir, won't you let us sponsor you on the radio? Radio? <laughs> Where's my coat? Mr. Burl, please, wait. Gentlemen, I'm tired of having to say no to my sponsors and to all you sponsors. Go on the radio. You're asking me to give up my polo with Daryl Zanuck, my yachting with Guy Lombardo, parties with Johnny Myers. <laughs> For what? Money. Money. <laughs> Where's my coat? Mr. Burr! Money, gentlemen. I have so much money, I knew who Miss Hush was and never even bothered to mention it. <laughs> Sorry, not interested. You'll broadcast from a mother of pearl studio with rhinestone microphones. We'll hire Bob Hope, Pippa McGee, and Fred Allen as your stooges. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I said no. But radio needs Milton Burr. Gentlemen. America needs Milton Burr. Gentlemen. Radio is crying for a man with your talent, your magnetic personality, your charm. Hmm, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> Kitties, you're cute, kindly, generous, beloved. <laughs> Gentlemen. Other men, you're a rugged, unswerving leader. Gentlemen. <laughs> Other women, you're romantic, gracious, handsome. Oh, gentlemen, you're terrible. <laughs> then you'll let us sponsor you. Oh, all right. Philip, Philip Morris has done, done it again. again. It's awful how I can be talked to anything. It's anything. Don't go away. didn't get that. It's awful how I can be talked into anything. <laughs> that was Milton Pearl's version of how he came to be sponsored. Here is the other version. The truth. Excuse me, gentlemen. Pearl! Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have to order to keep you out of the building. How did you get in here this time? I told him I was Johnny's father. <laughs> Gentlemen, please. No more hand -off. I'll beat it, you bum. Would you just let me stay for a minute? I just came in here to change the newspapers in my shoes. <laughs> please. Get out. We're busy. We have a half hour of radio time on NBC Tuesday night and no program to put on. Gosh. Well, how about putting me on the air? You, Burl? <laughs> Burl on the air? <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous, isn't it? Well, goodbye, gentlemen. Uh, wait. Say, maybe he's right. What can we lose? Let's put him on. Philip. You're right. We have nothing now. Morris. Yes, but with Burl, we'll still have nothing. Philip. For well, the first year, he'll work for Button. Morris. After that, we'll give him a zipper. Philip. What can we do? We're stuck. Morris. But sponsoring Burl, how do you feel about it? Philip. I don't know. How about you? Morris. Oh, let's do it. Philip. Okay, we'll do it. Morris. 
the risk. Why can't we lose? Philip Mars? <laughs> no. Well, no, no, I can't go through with it. Philip, wait. Morris. Philip Morris cigarettes have been put through every test, and we think we've got the best cigarette in the world, right? Right. Let's sponsor Burl and put Philip Morris through the acid test. You mean... If people listen to Burl and still buy Philip Morris cigarettes, then we know we've got the best cigarette in the world. Okay, Burl. You're hired. Morris Phillips! From New York to California, from Louisiana to Oregon, from city after city all over the country, eminent nose and throat specialists make this report. Listen. We are convinced Philip Morris is definitely less irritating than any other leading cigarette. That's why in cases of irritation due to smoking, we suggest change to Philip Morris. Yes, that's professional advice and good advice to every man or woman who smokes. Change to Philip Morris. Because the cigarette that gives you the least irritation is the cigarette that gives you the most enjoyment. After all, it's pleasure, deep, rich pleasure that counts in smoking. And the full measure of smoking pleasure is yours to enjoy day in, day out in Philip Morris. That's why we say, if every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. Banana, Thank you. Very nice. That was a great day coming, Manana, played by Ray Block and the Philip Morris Orchestra. And Ray, old pal, I, I want to tell you something, Ray. I, I, want, I want to tell you something. <laughs> We've been together for the whole year. I'm not going to make a speech about what I think of you and your orchestra, but I can just say it in two words. <laughs> no improvement. <laughs> and now, as we continue our salute to the new year, we present... New Year Forum tonight. New Year Forum tonight. The question, should you kiss your wife at the stroke of midnight, or should you stay sober? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Gallup. Now, let's have questions from the audience. All right, this young man in the third row wearing the General Myers button. <laughs> young man, step up to the microphone and tell me, what is your name? My name is Oldsmobile. <laughs> Oldsmobile? When I was born, my father was expecting a car. Oh, I see what you mean. They delivered me FOB. FOB? Full of bromo salsa. <laughs> Full of bromo salsa? At the hospital, they forgot to burp me. All right, all right. Now, uh, uh, Olsey, you have a question concerning the new year. I got a lot of questions concerning the new year. So what? Well, I thought... Well, you're a fortune teller. You can tell what's going to happen. No, I just What's thought... that on your shoulders? A head or a crystal ball? Now, look, I... Okay, Drew Pearson, get out your tea leaves. I got some questions. All right, but we... Answer this one. Why don't you make it a happy new year and get off the air? Now, wait Answer a minute, you... Well, when are you going to unravel that long, flapping tongue and tell a joke? Now, look, you little... Well, who's going to listen to you in 1948 besides your mother? Please. Ah, oh, your mother's portable. <laughs> Please, we must maintain order at our forum. Let us hear now from the ladies. All right, this lady in the red sunsuit and the blue goose pimples. <laughs> what is your name, madam, please? Hello, Athene. I'm a homemaker. <laughs> I see. And you have a question that has to do with the New Year. Yeah, how can I keep my husband sober New Year's Eve? When the old year passes out, so does he. <laughs> your husband uh, likes to drink New Year's Eve? He's very sentimental. At exactly 12 o'clock, he always drinks champagne out of my shoe. He drinks champagne out of your shoe? Yeah, that's why he makes me wear paratroopers' boots. <laughs> I see what you mean. Last year we had a party and he mixed a punch. He sure put a kick in it. He put a kick in it? Yeah, he stayed it with his foot. Mrs. Phoebe! Oh, well, he put his galoshes on face. Oh, I didn't know. Well, you think he's a slob or something? No, no. <laughs> That's different. He's always dropping into bars. He says he just wants to wet his whistle. Just wants to wet his whistle? Yeah, the trouble is he never knows when it's time to blow. <laughs> I understand. Last New Year's Eve, he ran out of liquor. He finally found the full glass. He did? Yeah, but that drink ruined him. For months, he couldn't eat a thing. What was in the glass? His teeth. Thank you, Mrs. Phoenix. Thank you. <laughs> and now, and now as a fitting climax to our form, we bring you a man who has just been selected the man of the year. It is an honor to present that rugged Adonis, that perfect specimen of American manhood, 
Big Mike Featherfield. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Featherfield. Thank you, Mr. Barrow. <laughs> this is indeed a golden opportunity for thanking my many fans who have seen my pictures in magazines and have sent me such wonderful letters asking, what is it? <laughs> Mr. Fanfield, it's wonderful. Out of the thousands of contestants, you were chosen the man of the year. Yes, and I owe it all to one thing, Mr. Burroughs. What's that? All the other contestants were women. <laughs> I understand that you stand a good chance of also being selected as Life's Magazine's man of the year. How about that? <laughs> Were you interviewed for life? Yeah. What happened? They didn't find any. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, what was your prize-winning achievement that made you the man of the year? Mr. Burrow, I single-handedly removed the most frightening menace facing the men of America. How did you do it? I married her. <laughs> oh, your wife. Well, how is your wife? In good health? Yes. Yeah. Discouraging, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, you mean your wife mistreats you? Mr. Burrow, when she beat me up last night, she had a reason. Mr. Featherfield, you've been bad again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell me, what, what did you do? Well, last night... Yeah. Oh, I, I shouldn't be telling you this. Oh, come on. <laughs> New Year's. Tell us what happened. Well, last night yeah. she caught me with the light on in my room after 8.30. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But 8.30 isn't late. Well, you don't understand. She'd already blown caps. Thank you, Mr. Featherfield. Dick Quaney to sing Happy Holidays Happy Holidays While the merry bells keep ringing May your every wish come true Happy Holidays Happy Holidays May the calendar Happy holidays to you. Don't let it bother you when things go wrong. If you're glum, just hammer some good luck will come along. Don't let it bother you if now and then. You may stumble, never grumble, come from one to ten. Brown with a smile, upside down. So turn that brown upside down and smile and sing. Don't let it bother you. If skies are gray, learn to green, take it on the chain. Everything will be okay. Happy holidays, happy holidays, may the calendar keep bring happy holidays to you. Dick, ah, oh, that voice. You know, when I was young, I had a beautiful voice, too. I used to sing in the sheet music department at Macy's until they caught me singing in the wrong register. <laughs> in the wrong register. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> God. I'm kidding. Gosh, Mr. Gallup, you know, I, I can't wait until tomorrow night. I, I'm really going to hit the high spots. Oh, Burl, an intelligent man, stays home New Year's Eve. I know, I know, I know. I stayed home last year and never again. Did I ever tell you what happened to me last New Year's Eve? No. Would you like to hear about it? No. <laughs> Gee, you're getting so nosy lately. <laughs> anyway, here's what happened. <laughs> you want to know what happened? I'd love to know what happened. What? Well, <laughs> you will do the straight lines. On the well, here's what happened. My... 
I could say that for another hour. We'd have no program. My wife and I, my wife and I were invited to a New Year's party at our neighbors, the Harrisons. But I decided, Mr. Gallup, just for once, I was going to stay home and just spend a nice, quiet New Year's Eve. And my wife was all dressed up, and I'll never forget the <laughs> Milton, it's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard, staying home New Year's Eve. You're getting as dead as those jokes you tell. Now, darling, you just run along next door to the Harrisons and try to have a good time without me. Try? You're kidding. <laughs> I'll call you at midnight and wish you a happy New Year. Good night, darling. Good night, Speedy. Ah, nice cozy evening in my easy chair at home. Now I can finally read that book Mr. Gallup gave me for Christmas. Oh, here it is. The Rise and Fall of the Roman Umpire. <laughs> Nice of him to remember I like baseball. It's a pretty big book. I bet before I even get to the middle of it, I guess who did it. Let's see. Uh... Here's the first page. Preface. <laughs> Gallup said it was a hard book to read. <laughs> oh, no. No, that knock. That Sam Harrison and his wife, Martha. Come in. <laughs> And that goes for Martha, too, doesn't it, Martha? Yes. <laughs> Hello, Sam. Hello, Martha. Oh, you brought the little daughter of yours over, Susie. Yes, your wife suggested since you're staying home, we bring her over here. Sam, please, I'm tired. Hail to your New Year's Eve party is no place for a little five-year-old girl. <laughs> you know the kind of stories I tell once I get going. Hey, Martha. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, come in, Susie. Now, be a good little girl, Susie, and don't bother your Uncle Milty. Good night, Milty. Well, well, well. <laughs> Here we are, little, little Susie. <laughs> Uncle Milty and little Susie are going to spend a nice, quiet New Year's Eve together, aren't we? Wow. <laughs> Just as Gabby is her old lady. Susie, while Uncle Milty reads, wouldn't you like to go into the kitchen and play house? Good, good. Now, go right ahead. Nice kid. Ah, now for the book. Introduction. Gee, it's getting easier. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Susie? Yes? Did you knock over the kitchen cabinet? Yes. <laughs> Look, Susie, you better stay here with me. I have it. Would you like to play some gin rummy with Uncle Milty? Penny a point? Yes. Uh, here are the cards. You deal. <laughs> Wait, a, a card fell under the table. You get it, Susie. That's it. Penny a point. I'll send her home in a barrel. <laughs> oh, there you are, Susie. Deal the cards. Ah, this is nice. Let's have some music. I'll get up and turn on the radio. Ow, ow! I'm falling! Look out! Ow, ow! Oh, my back. Get the lampshade off my head. There. Susie? Yeah? While you were under the table, did you tie Uncle Milty's shoelaces together? Yeah. <laughs> Susie, you wouldn't want Uncle Milty to break his leg, would you? Yeah. <laughs> now listen, kid. Now listen. No, no more horsing around. You pick up those cards and play. There. Let's see what I got. Oh, oh what a hand. Get this. I knocked with two. <laughs> I knocked. I mean... Oh. oh, you only have one, haven't you? Yes. Susie? Yeah. Did you deal off the bottom? Yes. <laughs> I'll deal this time. Come in. Excuse me, mister. I got stuck in the snow outside. Can I use your phone? Oh, all right. There it is. It's in the hall. Thanks. Hello, operator? Get me Denver, Colorado. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're calling Denver? It's my brother's car. I want to tell him what happened. Hey, do me... Paper. Write to him. I'll pay for the stamp. Look. <laughs> Just call for a tow car. Okay. Operator, get me Schmidt's garage. Now, maybe we can play a, a, another hand. Pick up your cards, Susie. I said pick up your cards. Why are you laying them down? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Gin? Yeah. <laughs> Up. Now go play by yourself. Bang your head against the wall or something. Say, mister, mind if I wait in here till the tow car comes? Okay. Gee, you're swell. I'll call the gang. The gang? They're in the car. Hey, gang, come on in. Hey, wait a minute. Don't throw the... <laughs> now, wait a minute, please. No drinking. There's a child in the house. Please. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now, please. Don't see. We have a child. Now, please. 
Mr. Tokar's coming any minute. I don't care what's coming. How's the owner? Ah, liquor. Now, wait a minute. Come on, again. No, no, no more, no more, please. Please, please, please. Quiet, quiet, quiet. I've got to get out of here. I'm going out and move those cars myself. Where's the door? Oh, gosh, the cars are stored for blocks. They'll be here till the 4th of July. Ooh, it's freezing. I better go in. The door's locked. Hey, open up, open up. What do you want? L- let me in. Sorry, the guy that lives here said no more. Beat it. Go in. That does it. That does it. I'm calling in through this window here and throwing them all out. Uh, here's the window. Wait till I... Oh, hey, my neck, my neck. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, please, let go of my neck. Oh, it's you, officer. <laughs> You see, officer, I I, 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 I I live here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We've been waiting months to get you, second story, Sully. <laughs> oh, officer, you don't understand. I live in the house. <laughs> it's midnight. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year, Sam. Oh, imagine Milton at home missing all this excitement. Oh, that's Milton. He said he'd phone. Hello, dear. Milton, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Is it nice and quiet there, Milton? Wonderful, darling. I'm reading that book. I should have it finished by the time I see you. Finished? But it's such a big book. I know, but I got 30 days to do it in. 30 days? I'm in jail. Aren't we, Susie? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll be back in a jiffy. In the meantime, here's a wonderful suggestion if you're planning to go to a New Year's party tomorrow night. Take along a holiday carton of Philip Morris for your host. It's a thoughtful gift that's always welcome, always appreciated. For a gift of Philip Morris is a gift of the world's finest tobaccos. Mellow and mild and superbly blended. Yes, a gift of perfect smoking pleasure. So make a note to take along a carton of Philip Morris to your New Year's party tomorrow night. Yes, say Happy New Year to your friends with Philip Morris. And remember, when you give Philip Morris, you give America's finest cigarettes. Thank you very much, Mr. Gallup. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Philip Morris and Johnny, may I wish you all a very, very, very happy New Year. And tomorrow night, if you want to make it a happier New Year, drive carefully and make sure most of the alcohol is in your radiator. (laughs) Happy New Year, everyone. If every smoker knew what Philip Morris smokers know, they'd all change to Philip Morris, America's finest cigarette. And now, goodbye, Johnny. See you next Tuesday, same time, same station. And listen in Sunday night when Johnny presents Philip Morris Night with Horace Hyde over the same network. Until then... <laughs> Hello, testing. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, five. Pipe smokers, try Revelation pipe tobacco, a smooth blend of five tobaccos. Yes, relax, take five, take Revelation, a fine pipe tobacco. <laughs> the Dozen Bell Show is written by Matt Hyden and Aaron Rubin, and it's Frank Allen saying goodbye for Philip Morris. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Mm-hmm.